The Rubik's Cube was invented 50 years ago today, and Minecraft just turned 15 years old. So that got me thinking, well, I'm a Minecraft Redstone YouTuber, and I'm also a Speedcuber. So why don't I combine the two together and make a fully functional Rubik's Cube in Minecraft with just Redstone? It can't be that hard, can it? Well, over the last 12 months, this has been one of the most brain-wrackingly difficult things I've ever done in my entire life. So enjoy. This video is sponsored by Speedcube Shop. More on them at the end of the video. So how the hell do we even make a Rubik's Cube? Some people have done it with mods, and some people have done it with command blocks. But I want to do it in vanilla Minecraft, which has also been done before, but those designs look very, uh disproportionate, and they can't do every single possible move. The middle slices don't move, and you can't rotate the whole cube. Fuck. I want mine to have all of that. So the first idea I had was sliding the blocks around with pistons, like this. Basically a conveyor belt. Seems pretty straightforward. If you want to turn the cube this way, then you power the pistons like this. And if you want to turn it the other way, then you power the other pistons like this. And it cycles the blocks around. Yeah, that doesn't work. I realized that every other 90 degree turn you do, the stickers aren't aligned correctly, so the cube would look even wonkier than it already does. But there was an even bigger problem. It doesn't rotate any of the stickers on the face of the cube. That's not possible on a real Rubik's Cube. It's the same as peeling the stickers off and moving them to the next side while these eight stickers stay still. You've just made an impossible position on the cube, so we need a way to rotate these stickers too. And this cube just isn't big enough to fit all that redstone. Stone, so I need to make it bigger. Something like this. It's pretty spacious in here. There's easily enough room to fit all the redstone. And as a bonus, we can't see those pesky pistons anymore. We pull the blocks inside the cube, cycle them around, and push them back out. That works for both the face of the cube and the stickers on the side. Well, it would, but in solving the last problem, we've created a new problem. The cube is bigger now, and Minecraft pistons can only push 12 blocks at a time. Any more than that, and it won't push. And in making the cube big enough to fit the redstone inside, we've also made it too big for pistons to handle. I did try changing the cube to make it work, but I realized it would end up being very disproportionate, which is a compromise I didn't want to make. So at this point, I was kind of stuck, and I was already starting to lose motivation. So I shelved the project to work on other things. But then one day, I was chatting about the cube with my friend Nano, who makes redstone computers, and he said, why not use map displays? And then I was like, Oh yeah, because not only would map displays be way more flexible than a cube that moves physical blocks around in a conveyor belt, but they'd also just be better. But purple, what the hell is a map display? Well, this is a Minecraft map. As you might already know, you right click it and it will show you a 128 by 128 top down view of your Minecraft world. So any block you place within that area shows up on the map as one pixel. See where this is going? If we fill the whole map with one color and then add a black grid pattern on top, then we get a pretty nice looking cube face. Do that five more times for the other colors, and we get this. The whole cube now fits on a single block. But right now, this cube is just a pretty decoration. It doesn't do anything yet. We still need a way to change the colors, and we can do that with pistons. So I quickly got to work and made this monolith of a redstone contraption. It might be hard to see how this could be one face of a Rubik's Cube, but if we look at it from the top, this is how. Each color is hidden underneath the next color. So if you want to change the color, we just put push out the pistons with the color we want. And there we have a working map display. So now we just need a machine that acts as the brain of the cube. It needs to tell the map displays which colors to show after each turn. Something that helped us out a lot was this video I saw on Reddit. It's a Rubik's Cube flattened into a 2D diagram. If we just recreate this in Minecraft, we will have a fully functioning Rubik's Cube. And you know what else would help out? It would help if you subscribed, because this video has taken way too long to make. But anyway, Nano wanted to do it all with normal computational redstone. But I had a different idea that would be a bit more intuitive to make and easier to follow for you, the viewer. We'd have a bunch of colored shulker boxes for all the different stickers and a system of water streams to move the shulker boxes around to the correct place. And the different color shulker boxes have different amounts of items inside, which tells the map displays which color to show. Now this would be slower than doing it with normal redstone, but we can speed the game up with commands, so it shouldn't be a problem. It definitely won't be a problem later, so with that design, 
decided, me and Nano started building. And at first, it did not go well. We got stuck multiple times trying to figure out how to connect everything together. And we'd go weeks or even months at a time without working on it at all. But eventually, after a lot of pain, we were onto something. We made this thing, which could do exactly what the other cube couldn't do. Rotate the stickers on the face of the cube. So now we just needed to connect six of these together, one for each side of the cube, and... Oh god, it still doesn't work, does it? This was partially our fault and partially the fault of the diagram for misleading us a bit. It's hard to explain why this was a problem, but basically, these circles represent the path the sticker has to take to get to its destination. And on the diagram, multiple stickers are moving along the same circle. But in reality, each sticker needs its own circle, so they don't get all mixed up. If we don't do that, then this kind of thing can happen, where you have two of the same color on the same piece of the cube, which, as you might have guessed by now, is impossible on a real Rubik's Cube. So once again, it was back to the drawing board. But I quickly came up with another idea. At the bottom, there's these things. These are the six faces of the cube. They can rotate their stickers around just like before, but if the stickers need to go to a different side of the cube, then we take them out and send them up a bubble column into one of these looping water streams. And yes, it does look like a modern glass office building. So for example, if I want to turn the top layer, this green sticker needs to go to the same position on the orange side of the cube. And the same goes for these two stickers as well. So it goes up this bubble column into this loop here where it gets sent clockwise and then it gets dropped down in the orange face. At least that's the basics of how it works. Now, there is a downside to doing it this way. The higher the shulker box has to go up the bubble columns, the longer it will take to do the turn because the shulker box has to physically travel a longer distance. But at this point, I've been working on this thing on and off for eight months while also working on other YouTube videos and I just wanted it to work already. So I just went with this. We fixed all the little bugs with this design and then it was time to program the moves. Oh boy. But then Nano had to be away from home for a while, so over the next few days, I just did it myself. And just like that, the cube was done. Well, I say just like that, but mapping the stickers to the correct coordinates on the correct faces and then turning that into a ROM that the cube can read is really, really dull and confusing. So now it's time for the first turns. Okay, I can see redstone flashing over there. That means the map display is about to change. So any second now, we should see the cube changing. Any second now. Uh... Why isn't it changing? I can see pistons moving on the map displays, so why aren't the maps themselves changing? Okay, there's one teeny tiny thing I forgot to mention about map displays. If something changes inside the map's area, those changes won't show up on the map unless a player is standing inside it, holding the map in their hand. So for the Rubik's Cube to work, we actually need six players as well. Okay. Hi. It all. Whoa. <laughs> What am I looking at? Whoa. Whoa. Okay. Yeah, sure. Hello. Here, hold this. All right. Here's one for you. Okay. Here's one for you. Okay. One for you. Okay. One for you. Okay. And one for you. Okay. You guys just stay there and hold those. That That's your job. Okay. Bye. So now that we have our trusty map holders in place, we can finally test out the cube. 47 seconds later. Okay. It works but it's really, really slow. I have the game running at three times speed, which is the fastest my computer will go with all of the redstone around here. And it's still taking over 30 seconds to do one turn. That's way too slow. Solving the cube with the beginner's method takes about 100 moves on average. So with 30 seconds per turn, that means it would take 50 minutes to solve the cube. And that's not even including the time spent looking around the cube, figuring out what move to do next. And even though I know a more advanced method that uses fewer moves, about 60 on average, it would still take me about 30 minutes to solve. Ugh, I should have just listened to Nano and made it with Redstone. It's April now. There's just over one month until the 50th anniversary of the Rubik's Cube. Surely we're not going to start all over again. Again.
So there you have the last year of my life condensed into about 11 minutes. If you want to try this cube out for yourself, then you can find the world download on my Patreon. But if you'd rather play around with a real Rubik's Cube, then check out the sponsor of this video, Speed Cube Shop. Did you know that the fastest cubers in the world don't actually use cubes made by Rubik's? That's because they're slow, noisy, they lock up all the time, and turning them can easily become a full body workout. Mm, give me strength. This really hurts my fingers. I have to use my whole wrist to turn this thing. That's why Speed Cube Shop sells, well, Speed Cubes. They have an absolutely massive selection of puzzles. I mean, they are the number one twisty puzzle shop in the world, after all. They've got showrooms and warehouses in Las Vegas and Canada. But if, like me, you're not in America, they also ship worldwide. I bought my first ever Speed Cube from them way back in 2014, and I kept coming back for more, like the cube I've been using in this video. But if that's out of your budget, they have some great budget cubes too that are still light years ahead of any Rubik's brand cube. And you can get a discount by using the code PURPLERS at checkout. You can check out Speedcube Shop through the link in the description.